Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today we have a remake video. Um, I've been meaning to get to it for a few days, but I've just been super, super, super busy. Um, what with work and everything like that, and the shitty weather. So, what we have here is the Canadian, uh, not Canadian, my bad, uh, the Swiss Historical Helmet Comparison. Um, now I've done these historical helmet comparison videos where we look at everything from their first modern steel helmet all the way up to what they use today. And uh, I've done that for both Britain and America and some other stuff. But I, I own a lot of Swiss ones. And I actually have four out of the six um, that they have actually used. Um, a lot of them, I have pretty good representations. And I'll tell you about the two that I don't have. Because they're actually very, very similar to a lot of the ones that I do have. I just haven't seen one in good enough condition and in my size to warrant purchasing it. Because every helmet I own is actually in my size. Um... So, but uh, without further ado, what we have here is the Swiss M18 helmet, and this is an original M18 that has been updated. Um, it has the World War II cover on it, and um, this helmet does not have its own video yet, but every other helmet in this vi uh, playlist will have its own video with a more in-depth history. Um, but I will go over the general history as far as the adoption date, the phase-out date, some of the accessories and changes that came with it, and everything like that. Um, and when updates came out with all of these helmets. But if you want a more in-depth look at everything, the, all of these helmets will have their own videos, and this one will get one soon. Um, in all their own videos, you could see them without the covers and stuff as well. Uh, so this is the Swiss M18 helmet, and this is the original Swiss mo uh, combat helmet. From uh, It's based off of the German M16 Stahlhelm design. A little bit different, um, not quite as flared, a little kind of Swiss pizzazz on it in the usual uh, way above and beyond craftsmanship. Um, it has the World War II helmet cover on it, uh, the reversible one with the tan side, which is like a brush stroke. Um, very reminiscent of British colors, but with kind of a more fall colorway. And the other side is um, like a very, very um, summer side, as it's called, and that's kind of like the, um, the German like jigsaw type stuff from World War II. Um, so... But what we have here uh, is the M18, and this is an original M18, you can tell by the liner. Um, it's not in original configuration though. The liner is in original configuration, but the chin step has been updated and replaced, and the uh, color has changed. Um, these all would have been an original kind of like dark olive green, and they would have had this uh, kind of rough paint texture to them. Um, this one has now been updated to the World War II or the M40, the M18-40 standard, um, to where it has uh, been painted black. And uh, there's still the green paint underneath this black, though. You can see it at some very small nick points uh, from the storage wear. Um, but the easiest way to tell uh, an original M18 from a later M18 shell is the fact that there's this little K stamp here at the back. I don't know if you can see that little square right above my thumb. It's just a little kind of square with a K in it because these were all made by uh, that manufacturer. And uh, another easiest way uh, is because some of these shells did receive updated liners, but if it didn't, it'll have this liner where it'll have the three pad, six tongue liner, and it'll have the full circle liner, which is riveted in place. Um, the later World War II ones, so the M1840s, will be missing this back section. It'll only have the three-quarters liner, and the pads will have changed. Um, but other than that, this is a completely original uh, M18. And um, the shell did change a little bit during World War II. Um, this has a very aggressive cut here, as you can see. It's very rounded, um, whereas later they went to a more flat design to save uh, the amount of stampings when they were stamping out shells. Uh, when the Swiss Army uh, swelled from like 30,000 people to 800,000 people during World War II, um, the Swiss Army had to radically simplify everything to save for one cost and time. Um, so they changed the shell a little bit in uh, 1940 and the liner a little bit to make it easier to manufacture. And so we'll transition to that right now. Um, so this is the Swiss M1840. It's not actually an M1840, uh, but it's very, very similar. The only difference between this helmet and an M1840, uh, an original M1840, is the shell composition. Um, this has the... Uh, um, 1957 pattern uh, 
camouflage, alpenflage cover on it. There's uh, They call it Taz. Swiss camouflage is called Taz. And the most common ones are Taz 57, which was the first pattern, which is this. Taz 83 and Taz 90, which is what they currently use. Um, it's based off of the uh, German uh, 1945 uh, Liebermünster camouflage, um, which was designed to defeat early night vision infrared, which is why it has all this red in it. Um, but so this helmet is in the M18-40 configuration. Uh, black finish, smooth. Um, if you look at it, it is a much flatter uh, progression right here. It's not as rounded, whereas the original M1840s are rounded. There's no stamp at the back of the shell, as you can see. Um, the liner, uh, the tongue liner has changed. As you can see, it's not a uh, three-pad six-tongue. It is a three-pad three-tongue. Uh, it has no... Um, little metal inserts in it, eyelets and grommets for the string to go through. It's just been uh, folded over and stitched to form little loops for the ch uh, little loop channels for the thread to run through. The liner has been updated from the full liner to the three quarters liner, as you can see by the fact that it is missing back here. Um, and they did that just to simplify manufacture. And uh, you can see M18s, original M18s, used all through World War II in their original World War I era configuration. Um, except for the paint. They will all have been painted black. Uh, it's very hard to find a green one. Um, so you will see them all in their original liner configuration and everything used through World War II. Um, you will see some of them updated to have this liner as the liners obviously deteriorated through the war. They were updated um, to uh, this style liner um, and everything like that. And uh, they were phased out probably sometime after the war, probably before the 50s, but in the late 40s. The original M18s were all phased out for M1840s. And then in 1946, this helmet came out. This helmet shell, I should say. Um, it's not a different helmet. It would be exactly the same as the M1840, but this helmet is made out of something called Duralumin, which is a aluminum alloy but it has a lot of other type of metals in it too to keep it from rusting to keep it lighter it's supposed to be just as rigid as steel um a little bit lighter than steel and it's supposed to never corrode um unlike steel so um it's supposed to be cheaper than stainless steel though so this came helmet came out in 1946 um they weren't made in all that great of numbers they did make a thousands of them but never enough to fully replace the steel m1840s and they were just kind of pressed into service you don't see them given to special troops or anything uh they were just sporadically issued across uh the swiss armed forces until eventually they were phased out in 1870 uh not 1871 1971 by the m71 helmet um which we will get into now um so here we have the uh, Swiss M71 helmet. Now, as you can see right on this, the cover is a little bit different. Uh, this is the Taz 83 pattern. Um, here you see the Taz 57 pattern, um, which you can tell is um, it's printed on the same fabric, but the Taz 83 is a blown up pattern. It's just a lot larger. Uh, all the parts in it are larger, whereas the Taz 57 is a little bit smaller. That's really the only difference between the Taz 57 and the Taz 83. Um, the colors would have been the the same. Um, this helmet is brand new though, so it's not sun faded like that other one, um, but they would have been the same. It's just this is a more enlarged pattern. Um, now this helmet uh, came about because the Swiss wanted to get away from the Stahlhelm design. They were um, transitioning uh, away from that after doing some testing like a lot of other countries after World War II that were using Stahlhelms kind of realized that the Stahlhelm design is great if you're fighting a static war. But there's helmet designs that are easier to manufacture, helmet shapes that are easier to manufacture, and will provide you more protection in a more mobile warfare, which appeared to be the way the Cold War was going. So, much in the same way Finland did, and uh, uh, everyone like that, they transitioned to a more round helmet. Kind of like an M1 design is very round, because they realize that that's better for... Um, 
def um, deflecting debris and blows and stuff like that away from your head is a more rounded design. Uh, they did away with a lot of helmets, did away with the skirts and stuff like that, so they could hear better and uh, the visors, so you could um, so you could see a little better. And the Swiss were no exception to that. They saw that that's something they wanted, and they made a round helmet design. They went away from the Stellhelm design, as you can see. This is a pretty round helmet as far as shell shape goes, uh, which will help uh, deflect blows and trauma away from uh, your head, uh, as well as providing a, a nice um, uh, way for their uh, the force of an impact to dissipate around the shell rather than be focused on one area because of how round it is. And that's why the M71 came out. Other than that, it's made out of the same steel as the M1840. Um, they did go back to the green paint, as you can see here, with that kind of uh, sawdust added to it to add to this globby type finish. It's not rough like uh, the U.S. who used like sand and cork in theirs. It's not sharp. It's just kind of a globby, uh, thicker kind of paint with a little bit of raised spots in it, uh, which helped reduce the shine, which is why they put those... Uh, bits of sand and cork and everything in the paint. It helps reduce the shine. Um, there is two versions of the M71 helmet. Um, none of them are really different uh, from one another. The only difference is the uh, one uh, later ones were updated with this extra rivet that riveted this little D-ring on it so you could hang your helmet on a hook or something like that in storage or in something like uh, barracks or stuff like that. It would just, you could hang your helmet up was all it did. Um, that's the only difference and that a lot of M71s were uh, just updated to that. Some weren't, some were. Um, but other than that, uh, the liner has changed a little bit. It's went to a four pad, four tongue, same kind of style tongues as the M1840, uh, where it's just a folded over loop to create a channel for the draw cord to go through. The chin strap went from two point to four point, which increased stability, still locks the same way via hook and uh, uh, around a metal loop here. Uh, the liner did change to um, help reduce impact trauma to the to the skull um, by creating this aluminum uh, liner, which is separate from the shell and uh, it raised off of the shell. And then behind that aluminum, between the aluminum liner and the shell is this foam, which is going to help um, absorb shock that would normally be transferred in the, into your head in an older design. It gives uh, some crumple room. Uh, for the shell if you were to be in a blast or uh, really, really hit your head hard. So everything is adjustable via keyhole and stud because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Swiss are very big on keyhole and stud type stuff, uh, which leaves some room for the adjustability to be desired. Um, now, uh, the paratroopers, uh, the airborne troops used, uh, and dispatch riders, I should say, uh, both of them used a very similar helmet to this uh, that didn't have these little ear flares that stuck down. Um, it would have been just cut off nice and straight. Um, but it used the pretty much the same liner. It just didn't come down as far. And uh, like I said, didn't have these ear flares off the side. So it was just a nice flush flat helmet, uh, which gave you some more visibility uh, and reduced the weight a little bit. Um, uh, was all that that was, and that's what paratroopers used. Um, this helmet was used up until the mid 2000 teens actually about 2014 2015 is when the swiss finally adopted their first composite helmet um and that's the only other one uh i'm missing is i don't have the composite helmet uh, an actual swiss variant but i have a very close variant and that is the Schubert helmet uh like many countries in europe um many nicer more developed countries in europe that don't have means of uh their own domestic manufacturer um, or just don't want to spend the money to start up domestic manufacturer. They went for probably the best helmet design to come out of Europe, and that would be the M88 Schuberth. Um, the Swiss one would look very, very similar to this one, um, except it would be, uh, it's kind of a tan color. It has the same liner and everything, but the only difference is in the chin strap. Um, so here's the liner. The liner is, um, very, very good. It breathes very well. It works well in a lot of temperature environments. It's adjustable for uh, having insulated uh, headwear underneath this. Um, it has the shell with all the collapsible tubes, as you can see there, the liner, which again acts as a crumble zone if the shell was to fail to dissipate impact from the head. Um, it is a Pazgat style shape, as you can see by the little bill and the, the skirt and uh, the neck taper and everything like that. It has the same um, liner, basically. Uh, 
with the addition of a foam crown pad above the uh, liner. The uh, plastic liner has a foam crown pad um, between this net and the liner um, for just a little bit of extra bump protection. Uh, and the chin strap is quick detach, whereas this one, to change the chin strap, you have to undo all the screws uh, and take it out and then put the chin strap in, route it through the screws, the screws through the chin strap so you uh, can change it. Uh, the Swiss one went for a quick change one, so you can quick change the chin strap out and all the lugs. Um, and they have these uh, different um, type of fasteners, like right here, this is the permanent fastener right here. Um, this fastener, uh, it has round, it's like two circular pieces, one is a circle and one is a stud, and they fit together so they swivel. Um, same thing on the side with the release on it, whereas this one does not swivel. Uh, the Swiss just went for a swiveling one, so the chin cup is able to swivel. Not the chin strap, but just the chin cup is able to swivel, which just aids in comfortability, really. Um, that's the only difference between this uh, M88 Schubert and the Swiss version, is just the chin strap um, and the color. Uh, so it's a little bit of an updated design to this, uh, but overall the protection is going to be the same. It just has a little bit more ease of maintenance and creature comforts at the cost of higher cost. Um, but this, that's something the Swiss really desired with their helmet, and uh, it makes out a good helmet. And I would love to get my hands on one of those if it ever comes on the market or if I could ever find one in a size about 58 I would love to find one um to the point where I've even called Schubert and Schubert knows who I am and they uh at this point um just uh are kind of like telling me no I just ask him if I could have a factory defect one um or if I could just get a liner to put in some of my Schubert shells I have like this uh of theirs and a lot of times they just tell me no and I'm like well I'll just have to wait I guess until one comes on the market but um but hopefully I can get one soon and I can remake this video and everything for you. I'm trying to get all of the variants of the Swiss helmets. But like I said, some of them just don't appear very often in good condition. Um, but when they do, I'll try to snatch them up for you guys. Uh, hopefully you can bear with me on this video. Hopefully uh, I don't get my account compromised again and all this other stuff and have issues. Um, YouTube seems to be working for now. And uh, I'm very, very happy that they got things fixed for me. And uh, their servers are back up, and they don't have any more shootings going on at their headquarters and stuff like that. And hopefully everything goes smooth for them from here on out. Um, and uh, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. That's all I ask that you do. Share my videos with the people um, who might need this information or people who would be interested in the same thing as me. Um, I always take suggestions for future videos uh, in the comments. Uh, I try to answer your questions in the comments. If I can make a video on your question or if you're question warrants a video i usually try to make a video for that i have a whole playlist about videos from questions and uh, you can find all of my question videos there uh, thank you so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next video bye